to the Horror Hangout, a podcast where two bearded film fans watch the 50 best horror movies ever and then talk about them. My name is Luke Condor VK and I'm joined by my regular co-host, Mr. Mr. Ben Errington. The OG himself. The OG the ori- himself. The original Reffin- Gary. <laughs> <laughs> I am the original Gary. Uh, yeah, many have tried to imitate me yeah. in the years, but no, I'm the original. Yeah. How are you? You good? You got your caffeine? I'm good. I got, I got some caffeine. Uh, in a little mug with my name on it, um, and I've got some protein. There's the two things you need, basically. The big, yeah. Just the two things. I've just got the caffeine, but I like mine in a glass. Oh, I'll yeah, interesting. In Is that tea? Mm-hmm. Tea in a glass? Yeah, it was like a glass mug thing, but for some reason it does, does taste a little bit different. It's, uh... <laughs> a little bit better. Is it like the Coca-Cola from a can, Coca-Cola yeah, co- from a coke bottle? Coke in a can, I'm telling you, is the best way to have Coke. Yeah, Coke in a can is is the best, or yeah. in line format off of the ass crack of a... No, no, I've, I've, got, I've got confused, mate. You know, oh, you, know oh, when you, uh, you get like tomato soup and you sort of scrape out the bottom bits oh. of the soup and then you lick oh. the spoon, it's like kind of metal. I like, oh. that, in my can, I like that in my Coke. I like to have a metallic oh, yeah. twang to it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, like, I like the first few sips of a can of Coke yeah. when, it, when the fizz really hits you and you're like, oh, oh it's refreshing. Jesus. It's refreshing, <laughs> but yeah. it's also intense. Yeah, you know, it doesn't get talked about enough as being a real, it's, it's a real great a experience. Pain to pleasure sort of experience, like a Toblerone. Yeah. Like you can't eat yeah. a Toblerone without like damaging your mouth. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> the roof of your mouth just gets absolutely <laughs> dented. Yeah. It's like biting another chocolate very... tooth, like a jaw. Yeah. yeah, it's not, it's not very straightforward, is it? You'd think that they would have uh, sort of worked out a few other shapes. I know it's called Toblerone. Yeah, I think the idea is to break one off and then put it in your mouth, but. You can't do that because oh. you get chocolate all over your fingers. You've got to gnaw it, mate. And getting chocolate on your fingers is annoying. Yeah, it is annoying. It is, yeah. mate. It is. Yeah, super annoying. I'm annoyed just thinking about it. Yeah, I can tell. Yeah. Right, okay. So uh, so this this week, we are not doing one of the 50 best horror movies ever. We are doing a dishonorable mention. Um, we went with Sleepwalkers, which I think was my choice, 1992. Mick Garris, Stephen King affair. Um, and... I kind of want to figure this is a dishonorable mention because it's got the whole mother-son thing going on. But um, before we get into that, <laughs> have you done any other mother thing, mother-son things this week? <laughs> have I? Yeah. Have I, did you, what did you? What did you just ask me? <laughs> have I done any mother son? Let's not get into that. Um, any, uh, any horror outings? Um, I didn't have any horror outings this week. So this week's been quite a dry week for yeah. horror. Horror wetness. <laughs> I don't yeah. know what I'm trying to say. Here. Um, yeah. I did. I did see um, Paddy Considine's Journeyman, okay. which he directs and stars in. So like a boxing film, yeah. which uh, um, and you know I'd seen a few bits and bobs of it, but not, I don't think I'd seen a trailer. But basically, if you're looking for any sort of story, an uplifting story of you know a boxer um, having any sort of victory, not, this is not, not a it. Story, is it? It's I've not a rocky it, story but, yeah. at all. Um, yeah. Obviously, no, no major spoilers, but um, he suffers like a head injury quite early on in the film. And yeah, it's a very, very bleak look mm. at the at boxing, like and what comes after you essentially can't box anymore. Like the dizzy heights and the, and the dizzy, wallowing, the dizzy dizzying, yeah. wallowing lows. <laughs> spells, but yeah, I yeah. mean, it was a really difficult, it was a difficult watch. There were a lot of like, my for gape moment you know like t- have you seen tyrannosaur so his no, i never watched that either that's and i do want to watch it that's very similar it's got a very s- similar sort of vibe um but some this I found, yeah. I found this yeah some box i found this even more of a difficult watch like it was one of those where i was a bit like oh wow you know you're kind of looking for something to latch yeah. onto some 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 scrap some of hope, hope did to you like see paddy's um through. paddy's tweet he, he put out um it's not like rock because he's in a band as well when he's, he says, oh. he's talking about how when you're in a band, um, you can play to an empty room and you still play music that you love, but cinema isn't the same. So he said, he was on about how no one had really turned up to watch Journeyman, so he wasn't too sure if he was going to make many more films. Oh, no. He did this a couple of months ago, this tweet, so he might have changed his, changed his tune. Yeah, maybe he's changed his tune. Maybe he's having a, he was having a bad time, you know. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's got Jodie Whittaker in it as well, who's the new Doctor, Doctor, Who. Doctor Who. Yeah, yeah. Doctor and she, Who. Doctor She. I mean, she was great. I mean, there's a lot of good performances, and there's a real like raw human story. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it was a it was a gut punch. Um, like f- obviously, boxing pun meant there. Yeah, 
Yeah. But it was a, it was a gut punch. I came out of it a bit like, oh bloody hell! I don't know. I expected something different, but still, um, good and a good performance. And I think I'd like it. I'd like it to make more films. Yeah, I really would because yeah, be, yeah. it doesn't I met have him to once be. And he called me dude, and I'm, oh. yeah, he's sound with me ever since. <laughs> <laughs> and you are a dude, so yeah. that's good. Yeah. Um, yeah, I didn't watch too much because obviously we're doing the two <coughs> recording twice today. Uh, so I just watched these two, but I did watch Hot Fuzz as well. Uh-huh. Very thought, nice. Because recently watched World's End and Sean Dead, I was like, I need to watch the rest just to sort of see, get a feel for it. And I think Hot Fuzz, you know what? I think it might be better than Sean of the Dead. I just think. Yeah. <laughs> I think, do you know what? Yeah. Yeah. I can get on board with that. There's just like a couple of moments. What? It's, there's more to it. It's like. I think Edgar Wright is sort of this is his best example of his British comedy mixed with the sort of animated camera movement sort of thing that he does. Like the, the scene where the Andy sort of pop their head off the screen and come back on the one <laughs> yeah. like that like, is is just inspired. Like, I've never that, I've never seen anything quite as good as that. And it's it's like I don't know if I've mentioned this before, but when talking about this film to you, but it's so many genres, but it's not a send up of any of the genres. Yeah, it kind of it. It's like a, it's an action film. It's yeah. a horror. It's a mystery. It's yeah. Like a it Miss ma- Marple's de- a Miss Mar- yeah. Sort of yeah, yeah. And it and it feels it feels small scale. It feels like a tiny little like yeah, like you said, like murder mystery yeah. um, that would be on British TV. And it feels like a big Hollywood action film as well. Yeah. And it is hilarious. Uh, yeah. So that was good. <laughs> it's a sort of a shame. I don't know if Edgar Wright and, and um, Simon Pegg are still writing stuff together. I don't know. I hope so. Because I feel like those two together do have yeah. a certain magic. Certain they're both... They're in a, they're, um, sorry. Um, Simon Pegg and Nick Frost are in a film called Slaughterhouse Rules. I don't know if you've seen the trailer for that recently. Yeah. I don't know if they're in it together because it seemed in the trailer every scene yeah. was one of them and not both of them. Um, and maybe, you know, maybe it's a small part for one of them. Um yeah, it would be nice to see. Yeah. I'm sure they've Edgar Wright and Simon Pegg have kind of drawn a line under uh, their collaborations, but it would still be nice for them to yeah, for sure. do something again eventually. Because I think, as we mentioned before, Simon Pegg hasn't quite reached the heights that we possibly expected of him. I mean, I know he's. I mean, he's in some big films, but anything he's kind of been the lead in has kind of been a bit of a disappointment. I think he's done that many things where he is the lead, though. Um, no, no, no. And but he then is such, so good yeah. at that. And what's what? Sorry. Yeah, yeah. No, no. I was just agreeing. Uh, so. Yeah. Uh, the only other thing uh, I've been reading um, some Richard Layman books. Have you ever read a Richard Layman book? I don't think I have. No. So uh, how do you describe Richard Layman novels? They're like, um, you know, like in secondary school, where there's a guy on the other side of the room, like cheekily writing smutty stuff and he sort of passes you a note across the room oh, and you God. read it and it's sort of like you can't have a laugh it's kind of like yeah. that but this that guy grew up and started writing like extreme horror sort of novels it's um they're, they're incredibly gory incredibly like pervy but also <laughs> kind of like fun and de- like debauched and depraved and sort of like fun slasher films but like yeah. you can't have a sort of smile and laugh at like the ludicrousness of ludicrosity whatever that word is uh, as as you're reading, but it's definitely worth reading. Um, he died not too long ago, I mean, well, ten years ago, two thousand eight, I think. Um, yeah. But they they say he's like reading Stephen King, but if Stephen King didn't have a conscience, because no, not only no, no one comes <laughs> oh out God. good in these stories, everyone's kind of like bad in one way or another. It's, it's just really fun. So yeah, definitely, definitely. Give, there's the one that I read last was called Island, the Island, which is really good. Um, and then I'm reading one called Endless Night now, which starts with four um four or five like people home and in, invading these people's home it's like killing a lot of people it's about this girl trying to escape and then it cuts to the perspective of one of the killers who is being forced to do these things these horrible things yeah, it's 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 good so definitely recommend checking out if you want to you know broaden your horizons from stephen king and stuff if people yeah. are there have, have, any, have any have any have any of his um books been Adapted into films at all? I think one, but I think it was a TV movie in America for a lot, like a few, quite a while ago in the nineties or something. I don't think it was did very well, but yeah, nothing, nothing big. But that's the thing, but there's not many authors who do get the big treatment. Apart no. from Clive Barker, got a bit of it when he's mm. doing it himself. But yeah, I don't, I don't think many authors do. 
Richard Matheson, I guess. Oh yeah, big bad Matheson. Yeah, but uh, yeah, that's about it, really. That's all I've been doing. So, well, can't yeah. can't can't be playtime all the time, mate. You got to work yeah. hard, don't you? Yeah, yeah. Thanks. Uh, <laughs> Sleepwalkers. Um, wow. Do you do you want to tell us a bit about what it is? Sleepwalkers. So, Sleepwalkers, mm. also known as Stephen King's Sleepwalkers, is a yeah. 1992 American horror film written by Stephen King, directed by Mick Garris. Um, and the film revolves around the two, the last two survivors of a vampiric, shape-shifting species that feed on the on the life force of virgins. So, a mother and son team move to a small town to seek out a young virgin to feed on. Lovely. All right, this is what um, Empire Magazine had to say. A ravenous mother and son are the last of the sleepwalkers. They are the creatures who prey off virgin's blood and can shift shapes to take form of cat-like beasts. When a teenage girl escapes his grasp and runs for help, the hunt begins for the savage pair who are only vulnerable to, do, to a scratch from a cat. Gore plenty, but unforgivably, there is scarcely a genuine fright nor a clever thrill in the entire film. Two out of five. And it's got 5.2 uh, on IMDb. Um, yeah, is this the first time you've seen it? Have you seen it before? Yeah, I've never seen this before. Um, I think I was like kind of familiar with the name of the film, and yeah. maybe in the recesses of my mind, I knew that Stephen King had written it. I didn't know it was he'd written it just for the screen. I think yeah. maybe part of me was thinking maybe it was a book or a short story or something or summer. But yeah, I've never seen it before. Have you seen it before? Yeah, yeah. Um, I think a couple of times. Um, I kind of know the entire film, uh, but I. Only, only as I'm watching it, I was like, "Oh yeah, that's that's that, that's that weird detective with his uh, cat, pet cat that attacks them." I remember that, yeah. So <laughs> it's a weird one. The tone of the movie is so like off. Like, yeah. I don't know if it's the music choices because it's like got '80s music in mixed with like a lot of like '60s Americana style slide yeah. guitar stuff. There's something about the tone. The the the, the main character's motivations don't really make that much sense. Um, no. It, it, I think it's a bizarre film. The, the 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 creatures, the mythos behind them is so convoluted. Like, oh, and yeah. the telekinetic. Oh, yeah, and they, and they can make themselves invisible. <laughs> yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. There are things that are happening. Um, yeah. that I was just a bit like, what? <laughs> what is going on here? <laughs> yeah. Why have they got so many? If they got so many like powers, how are they the only two left? Because yeah. surely, it's just yeah. mental, isn't it? It's so what, what are what are they like? Where and why, and why are they yeah. called sleepwalkers? What has that name got to do with uh, with maybe it's the vampire thing? But if it's the vampire thing, I don't know because they're like Egyptian, ancient Egyptian cat beasts who are allergic to cats. <laughs> yeah. Who, um, uh, have the, the 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 men have to suck the life force out of virgins, and the only way the mother can get the energy is by having sex with the son. It doesn't really <laughs> like. How many sense does it make? I don't know. Well, I don't know, but we need to ask Stephen King some serious questions, yeah. don't we? At this point, we just go, mate, they ask you to make a film, and you're like, oh, bloody, I ain't got any fresh ideas. I'm just going to literally throw everything into this big melting pot. Maybe it's, maybe it's not, I mean, maybe it's not a bizarre for Stephen King, because a lot of his stuff is bizarre, but he has like a thousand pages to introduce the yeah. craziness of it all, whereas this That's is true. like, yeah. it's in your face straight away. And if it's, a, if it's a film adaptation of Stephen King, usually it is a bit streamlined anyway, so... Yeah, some of the more crazy elements might might yeah. not get included. Yeah. Yeah. Did you recognize the theme tune, like the the opening music? Remind me, because I don't know if I remember now. Well, the only way I remember because I only know it from that it was sampled for that song. Ready or not, here I come. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, it, was, it was at the end as well, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah. It's, it, that was like the best part of the film. I think I was like, oh, I like that song. Ready or not, here I come. You can, yeah, 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 but um, yeah. So not not a great film, but certainly. <laughs> well, how dare you? How dare you? I would say uh, I think it's more watchable than the unnameable. I think, which yeah, is yeah, yeah. The, oh. the barely watchable. <laughs> oh, oh no! <laughs> oh, oh snap! Shade. Uh, oh yeah, it's definitely watchable, and I, I mean, just for the, the the amount of cameos as well. Yeah, like it. I mean that's that's entertaining as it is, but yeah, I mean apart from that, the main sort of plot is a bit mishmashed. And I mean, why are they allergic to cats? Like, is that yeah, ever explained? I'm... It's just like, oh bloody, hell. they're more than allergic to cats. Like, if a cat gets hold of them, they start melting, and if a cat's on you long enough, they burst into flames. Yeah, yeah. I mean, 
I get, uh, yeah. my, eyes get, my eyes get itchy, so I do understand. But, uh, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I don't know. I think I think they should be dogs, shouldn't they? If they were dogs, it would kind of make more sense. Maybe. <laughs> yeah, or anything else. Yeah. Anything else. Why but would they, they are be cats. cats? They are cat things. I like. They hate Persian. cats, right? So answer, answer yeah. me this. They hate cats, these yeah. cat people. And they live in a yeah. house where there are a load of cats outside for like some New reason. Yeah. Are they, like, drawn to them? <laughs> Yeah. Are they drawn to them? Like, what, are yeah, the cats? So. Yeah, they are drawn to them. Yeah, this they they yeah. they give up catnips. Oh, right. I, don't yeah. they, I don't know. And then they've set like traps in Bear in traps, their yeah. in, in their garden for the cats to just wander into. Surely the cats will realize after a while there's bloody traps around. I'm I'm eye telling it out of here. Yeah, well, they did quite well on the last house. The, the film starts with a house where there's like hundreds of cats like hung on strings and stuff. But this yeah. house, they're like messing it all up. I think they got one cat. In the bear trap, yeah. right into it. Well, so, so when it, when the film starts and we see all these cats hung up on strings, mm. where are they? Because it looks like they're just on the main road of like Las Vegas or something. It's just on the main uh, strip. I think it, I think they said California or something on the so, west coast. So, yeah. are all these cats hanging outside the house? Have they been there for ages, or have they all just been killed in one night? What's going on? I think for eight, like over time, right? Oh, you mean yeah. like you mean like cars wouldn't pass and go? Oh, that's what yeah, like just three or four cats on strings there. <laughs> Three yeah. or four, like fifty. Yeah. Well, they pass and, the next day and they go. Hang on, there's there's more. Yeah, hang on, there's bloody loads. Yeah, um, I know what you mean. If one cat was hanging up, you'd be like, "Hang on a minute, I better call someone." Yeah. That's sick. Yeah. Um, yeah. So Mark Hamill is one of the police officers who goes into the house and with all the cats adorned on it, um, yeah. and then they find a a corpsicle. Yeah. Well, let's just quickly uh, talk about the key players. All oh, right. Um, okay, yes. Getting, getting excited. Oh, it's all right. Brian Krause plays Charles Brady, who's the son, the son, the, the breadwinner, the virgin blood winner, or whatever. The, yep. the kind of vampires who don't suck blood, which I'm never really too keen on. Um, I don't like the, yeah. the light through the mouth idea. Um, Madge, Madge Shen Amick, I don't know how to pronounce her name, but she's one of the waitresses in Twin Peaks. And she's yeah, one of them yeah, yeah she Linda. is. Plays Tanya Robertson, who's, who is the, the, the target, uh, the virgin target. Alice yep. Krieg or Krieg plays Catnips Evergreen. <laughs> I write down here, but her name's actually Mary Brad Mary Cat Brady. Catnips Evergreen. <laughs> She's, there's um, some, Alice Krieg. There's something yeah. about her which I find a little bit sinister. Yeah. Um, I think everything I've seen her in, I find her a bit sinister. She's in Star Trek, um, like First Contact. Um, she's also in Silent Hill. Is she? And, oh, is she one of the the cultists? Yeah, she's like the lead cultist, and there's something about her. Where I'm just like, ooh. Yeah. She really gets under my skin. Yeah. And now, and now she's an incestual cat beast. And I mean, I've, <laughs> she's really gone down in my estimations. Yeah, well, she's very convincing. I mean, that's the worrying thing. Like, you're doing this too well, Alice. Um, yeah. Jim exactly. Haney. Jim Haney. <laughs> Haney. <laughs> plays uh, <laughs> Sheriff Ira, who's the detective who's sort of sorting it all out. Um, and then Ron Perlman comes in as a sort of obnoxious uh, police he turns up on. like probably two thirds of the way into the film, doesn't he? Yeah, yeah, and he looks kind of more weird. His face is more weird than like these people when they turn into cat people. <laughs> <laughs> Give him a chance, like they go, "Oh, there's a cat person over there," and Ron Perlman no, goes, it's just "Oh, yeah," and they go, "Oh my god, Ron Perlman!" <laughs> yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. So you're right. So it opens with that house, and Mark Mark Hamill is uh, is kind of playing it quite kind of hammy as well. Most of the acting and this is a bit hammy there's a lot of hammy acting yeah, yeah. but it's, it feels like it's knowing hammy acting isn't it it's yeah. like it's got a little summit about it where you're a bit like it feels almost it yeah. does feel a little bit like a spoof but not enough for me to yeah. not think oh this is gonna just shit <laughs> they um so they go into the house um mark hamill and his mate uh, and then they look at the cats and they, this isn't right and they open a door and there's a jump scare and it's a yeah cat, a cat jumps out so it's a proper cat jump scare and then yep. there's a second jump scare with this like corpse, and the corpse like screams as it falls out. Yeah, <laughs> but yeah. it's a corpse that's been sucked yeah. dry. Yeah, it's like a prune. Why does it, why does it yeah. scream? It's like a spring-loaded scream. That door yeah. has got attached to it, like 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 a like a birthday card, you know. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, um, and she, she's got like a rose behind her ear that's like fresh, so it's like a really a- aged corpse, but she's got a fresh rose. Um, unless it's plastic. Why she got a fresh? Why she got a fresh rose behind her? Well, I think later on the mum she does it. Ah, uh, the mum she likes likes yeah. a good rose, doesn't she? Yeah, she likes flavour food, yeah. like a cat. Um, 
<laughs> okay, so <laughs> and then we're introduced to they've moved to this new town. The Sleepwalkers have Charles and Mary. Yeah. Um, and they don't all... do any sleepwalking, do they? No, I didn't see. I didn't see one bit of sleepwalking. There's no sleepwalking in this film. They, they, yeah. they don't do any sleepwalking. It's not suggested they do any sleepwalking. The word sleepwalk, sleepwalkers, or sleepwalking isn't mentioned once in the film, right? No, apart from in the title. Apart from when it says Stephen King sleepwalkers. I don't know. I don't it's know bloody weird, isn't it? It's yeah. confusing. It's it's yeah. confusing. So uh, Charles and Mary, they're now living in um, Louisiana by the bayou or something. It feels kind of like that. Um, yeah. A bit swampy. Um, and they're, they're always listening. Every time they're on screen, they're always listening to this like 50s slide guitar sort of like music. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> and, uh, and I think he's talking about how like his mum's been weirdly flirty right from the get-go. She's like, give it to yeah, me. Yeah, but did you maybe think? Did you maybe think there was something like where he calls her mum? I was thinking, is this just some sort of like kinky role play they've got going on? Mommy. Yeah. <laughs> maybe like he was wearing a diaper That's what at the time, and I was like, oh, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, like as the film progresses, I mean, you yeah. do come to understand that they are they are definitely related. But at this yeah. stage, I was a bit like, what is going on? What is going on here? Yeah, it was, it's it's. So Stephen King does his more horror elements that he puts in the novels do tend to be sometimes a bit incestual. Like he does talk about that every now and again, but it works in the books. I don't know if it really works here because it's just so out there and so mm. open. I don't know. Yeah, it's a bit like you're supposed to just accept it. You yeah, know? and it's not. It's never been one of those things that I yeah. can always just go. Well, <laughs> each to their own. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so I think we've introduced pretty early on to. Charles basically says, "I've got, a, I've got a girl on the go. She works at yeah. the cinema. He, he goes to Marcus territory. He goes, goes to, Marcus. to I mean, he goes and asks for a large popcorn, and then yeah. he goes, make sure you cut a hole in the bottom of the. <laughs> is that what he says? <laughs> no. <laughs> is that what he says? Yeah. That's a Luke Condor move. That is. <laughs> yeah, I wouldn't do that because all the popcorn kernels. Like, yeah. yeah, straight down the. Yeah, <laughs> straight down the." Eureka. Slide guitar, slide the slide guitar. <laughs> straight, down, yeah. straight down the slide guitar. Ooh. <laughs> oh Jesus! Yeah. Oh, oh, that's made me feel yeah. weird. You know when you just think oh, about Charles Nelson's favorite song. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, dirty um, boy. So Tanya, again, the music. I don't know. The, the, the music is like kind of anachronistic because Tanya's listening to like fifties Americana as she's sort of sweeping, but. Mm. But then we get a lot more, like, she's got like a Walkman. I think maybe she's supposed to be listening to that music to show that there's a sort of connection with her and Charles, yeah. maybe. But she's, an old, she's an old soul. An old soul, yeah. yeah. But, um. With a lovely young virgin body. Yes! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think, um. So Charles goes home and bangs his mum, right? <laughs> I'm pretty sure that happens now. <laughs> <laughs> oh, sorry, I know I come here to see you and yeah. and have a bit of a flirt with you, but I am absolutely <laughs> dying to shag my mum. So I'm going to have to go. What? What did he you goes, say? He oh, I said... Uh... <laughs> he goes home, his mum puts on his slag time music, and yeah. then they go to the bedroom, he cuts to the bedroom, put, put, like, pulls out, and it's like a day glow, sort of UFO sort of glow sort of thing happening in the bedroom window. That's weird. So, so you know they're getting kinky. <laughs> And you see their you see their true forms at this point, don't you? In the in the bedroom, oh yes, in the mirror, Sliding in the mirror, around, yeah, Slipping yeah. So, it's, so their up. true forms are like cat lizard people, like they're that, cats, like but they're gr- like greased Persian cats, greased up Persian cats, yeah, um, with massive, massive heads. Their heads are huge. I think their heads that, are like <laughs> why is their head so big? Is that they got like it's like it's like they're wearing um, a crash helmet. Yeah, like, they're massive. These heads. Yeah. It looks like it's one of those. You know, some people, sometimes people got like a a crash helmet, but it's just like a um, a, it's like a gimmicky one where it's just like massive. It's, yeah. got, it's got like big furry ears on it. Something. They look like that. Is it because like um, to scale, cats have quite big heads compared to the bodies compared to us? Are they trying to sort of Do make they? them look more cat like? Well, if you think cats about cats, got it, tiny heads. Cats got like little pea heads, don't they? Like you could crush it in your hand like a grape. I wouldn't do that. I would never do that. I suppose it depends on the cat. But yeah, it does. So I guess some of them got, got big, big head. <laughs> <laughs> I hate it when you get headbutted by a cat. It's horrible, isn't it? 
when they yeah, when they come in for the time. old yeah it, they come in for the old time, yeah. yeah and then they just proper nut you you're like god that hurt me i was it i was affecting you you, <laughs> yeah. you you're unfazed <laughs> by this by this swift dead butt yeah but yeah so they look like uh they've got really massive heads um what's his name the guy who plays charles i noticed he has a sort of like a feline sort of like he's got dimples around his mouth yeah i was i was wondering where i recognized him from and i think it's um it's uh what was it called Oh, magic. The thing that's like Buffy, but with magic. Char- Charmed. Charmed. Yeah. <laughs> he's in that. He's got a very, like, he's got a bit of a flat face. Flat I think. face. Did you think, did you, were you getting any sort of Heath Ledger vibes from his face? Because every now and again, he'd look a certain way and be like, oh, it's got sort of, there's something Heath Ledger going on about he's his face. He's got mouth. that Heath Ledger little face going on. No, I don't know. I don't know <laughs> yeah. if I did feel like that. He's um, he got a very distinctive mop of hair in this film. And when, when his face like transforms a bit cat like it mm. kind of looks ridiculous <laughs> it kind of looks ridiculous and it's this cat with like a big floppy <clears throat> well they they also like kind of halfway transform don't they and that looks like it's from buffy the vampire slayer they do the exact same face transform- transformation yeah yeah so it's that this sort of minimal makeup just like well i guess probably a lot of makeup but just a yeah. furrowed furrowed brow yeah um, yeah. and sort of uh, yeah that's two weird. whiskers maybe I don't know if to put the I've never in. I've never really been a fan of that it's been it's, it's used in a lot of sort of films the sort of it's, kind of was the change is so like not believable immediate. <laughs> yeah yeah, yeah. Um, so uh, so what happens now so uh, Charles is courting this young Tanya I think he goes around to hers and the, he meets the mum uh, yeah and there's like um, I was watching it with Kat my fiance Kat and our pet cat, and uh, we were. Cat pointed out like because she's her mum, Tanya's mum, does these like stone ro- grave rollings or grave whatever grave rubbings, yeah, grave yeah, rubbings. Yeah. And then he was like, "Yeah, my mum does it too." And we were like, "No one does that." What? No one, no, 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 no one does. It's not a really common yeah. thing. <laughs> yeah. Like, uh, oh, you're really into badminton. Oh, you, well, you love going for a bit of water aerobics. Yeah. No, I, I love rubbing gravestones. No yeah, one's ever. No one does that. <laughs> yeah, we're off down if to you do. S- uh, bums and tums, and then we're going to do some grave rubbings. Yeah, <laughs> grave rubbing. There's yeah, and if you saw someone doing that, you'd be like, "What are you doing, you absolute mentalist?" Yeah, leave the gravestone that... alone. Is it? Is it? Does it, does it only. Good... Sh... I don't know. It doesn't look good. Like it... more... I like the idea, I guess, more than the actual finished thing. The finished thing good. looks rubbish. It looks like a, yeah. a classroom of kids. I've gone out and sort of. Do you remember when you used to do that as a kid? Like go to, around different places and do it. Like yeah. uh, go go around a castle and there'd be like an engraving somewhere and they go right. Everyone's going to do a rabbit of it now and you get some uh, nonsense. Okay. Yeah. Just no, take I... a photo of it or have a look at it. Don't yeah. touch it and rub it. Or just take the gravestone with you. I think having the gravestone in like your front room would be a lot more interesting than having the rubbing. Michael Michael Myers, you know, he should have done his rubbing. <laughs> but Michael Myers have, he... rubs a lot. Yeah. yeah. If Michael Myers would have just ended up with a rubbing of uh, of, <laughs> of of his sister's gravestone yeah. on the bed, it wouldn't have been half as it's impactful. Effective. Yeah. <clears throat> so they go to the graveyard. Tanya. Oh, this I'm jumping a bit. I think at some point uh, there's a bit of shake. No, what? what so when did he get chased by the policeman in the car? Mm, I'm not sure if it's. Yeah, yeah, I think this is. I think this is fairly soon off. About around about now, he gets chased. So there's a really weird bit where he's driving along, and then his teacher, who we're introduced to a scene before, and his teacher's like hitting people with a ruler and kind of like just being genuinely a bit mad. Way just too like, aggressive. Way too aggressive like, for a teacher. Yeah. And then he like gets Charles to stop on the road, like pull over. And he goes, beats you didn't go to, Yeah, you, you didn't go to that school that you said there was no such thing as paradise falls and i've been doing I've been, I've been doing a bit of research on you i was like yeah then, tell me on monday morning why yeah are you tell me oh, jesus me? why are you speeding yeah. down the highway <laughs> tell me on monday morning <laughs> and does he try to like touch him or what's going on yeah, is he trying he to starts, like manhandle him like this is way yeah, too much like, for a teacher but mr. like in a sec- mr in gary a sec- it's like <laughs> calm down in a sexual way or like a oh just- i don't know I was well, a bit confused. It was a bit like he went... Oh, he does God. pop a hand in quite quickly, doesn't he? He pops a hand in, yeah. And then obviously yeah. this is the first time we see Charles um, turn into his cat semi-form, semi-cat so he gets form. gets a semi on. And gets he, a semi-cat. Uh, yeah. And he kind of... And there's a fairly good line where he says... He, so he basically pulls off the teacher's hand. Yeah. And he goes, you're supposed to keep... I told you to keep your hands to yourself. So here you go. Here's yours. <laughs> or something like that. <laughs> something a bit. Yeah. Some, I probably murdered that. Um, even... <laughs> 
<laughs> it's not a great the line anyway. I forget about Charles as well. So Charles comes across for for half of the film as a sort of like semi romantic, like he wants out of the sleepwalker life. Like he yeah. he actually likes Tanya and he's he's falling in love with her and stuff. And his mum's even like, don't don't you dare fall in love with him. Don't but you? Then, yeah. But then as soon as he sort of gets his back up, he turns into an absolute knobhead like instantly. Yeah, like he becomes like full on like he starts murdering villain. people, just like going yeah. going ape shit. So, mm. so yeah, he um, so the cop he, chase, basically, he he kills the teacher, right? Yeah, and then he drives off super fast, yeah. and obviously the cop, and then we're introduced to a police officer character who inexplicably has a cat on the pa- passenger seat, called like Clovis. during it, called yeah. Clovis, while he's like working. Is yeah. that allowed? Yeah. The, the, uh, I don't know what what went wrong in the, in the <laughs> acting in this bit. Like, I don't know if it's the actor. The actor's probably quite good. I think it might be the the directing, or because he's like just just talked to the cat. Yeah, like, and he starts singing really some really weird and stilted about the the way it's, it's all put together. Oh, know. hey there, cat! You having a little nap? Nap yeah. time for you, cat! And he starts singing some weird songs. Did you notice yeah. that? He's like, oh, Jimmy. Bizarre. Yeah. Jimmy had his dick in his hand, and then he was—he just started singing things like that. I'm like, this is inappropriate for the yeah. audience of one cat named Clovis. Jesus, so, like, is is a proper nut box when you think about it. Like a man who takes his cat to work. Yeah. Like if anyone was doing that, and any later scenario, on when he's telling the rest of the police station, I saw a man with no face, and they're like, he's the guy who talks to his cat. He's the guy I who got, <laughs> takes his partner is a cat. I mean, that there yeah. is basically um, comedy team ter- up. Yeah. Tur- Turner and Hooch, but uh, yeah. you know, but with this guy in Clovis. Yeah, black guy in Clovis. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh. So oh. anyway, so he gets into a high speed chase with uh, Charles in his yep. invisible changing car. Uh, he looks at Charles's face, and then Charles sees the cat Clovis yep. in the car, and his face goes. Uh, it doesn't go like blurry. It just has five different configurations that it just it, flicks must, it morphs into it morphs into like five different conf- configurations, including because I had to go and pause it and have a look, <laughs> including a child. Like the first thing he turns into is like a Does child. He? Yeah, he like turns into a child. It's a child's head. Then it's just like a version of the cat, but like proper messed up, like with the face like. Rrr! Yeah. And then it's like then it's like the, the half cat person. <laughs> Yeah. Then it's like a weird version of him, and then it's like the full fledged massive head cat thing. It's just like yeah. what, like for what? Just from seeing a cat, you see it. You see, there are cats outside your house, mate. There, there are, are fifty cats. cats outside, you've yeah. seen what cats look like. Don't suddenly just see a cat and go. Oh, 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 oh. It's like when uh, a, a, a pet cat sees a cucumber, you know, and it's sort of like jump yeah, out. Yeah, yeah. He has they, the same reaction. They think is it, what do they think it is? Like a snake, isn't it? Yeah, something like that. Yeah. Um, but yeah, but so he sees cats outside his window all the time. Why is he suddenly so shocked? Well, maybe it's because he's driving or something. I don't, I don't know. Um, but but he runs away. By the way, he he kills um, the teacher by like it looks like he's sucking the blood like an old school old school vampire. Yeah. But obviously, that, we know that isn't how he. No, and we we never see anything of the teacher again. You know, there's nothing like or body's been found or, you know, yeah. he's, he's he's been found sucked off. <laughs> his hand's been sucked off. Yeah, um, yeah. No one goes. Oh, teacher went in this yeah. morning. That's weird. Where is he? Probably dead. Nope. None of that. Yeah. Forget him. No one found his bloodied ruler anywhere. No. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, okay. So, so that the policeman g- goes back to the police station. He's like, "Look, guys, I saw a guy with no face. Keep an eye out for a blue car." And it's that point, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. which um, Charles takes Tanya to the graveyard. Because she's yeah. gonna take some photos. Also, for, his... first off, Charles changes his car, right? Is that now? Yeah. <laughs> so he can change. So his, Charles his is car. basically. So you know, in GTA, when you like go and get a paint <laughs> job to change yeah. your car, so then the police go, oh, "Bloody, I don't recognise." Yeah. Oh, who's this guy? Oh, it can't be the same guy as before because his car is blue. But we were chasing a guy with a red car. Yeah. He basically does the version of that, but somehow just like thinks it. Yeah, he just thinks it really hard. I tried. It, it he's got work. what he's got there. He's got the GTA cheat code. Yeah, memorized the one where you could just do that. <laughs> yeah, with the power he changes, of his mind. Yeah, he changes the, the color of the car. Um, so, but it's not it's not permanent. Like it does go back to blue later on when he's not thinking about it. So they go to the graveyard. That's he's weird. doing some grave rubbings, and at this point we're, we're like, oh, I think he likes Tanya. Yeah. Um, it's kind of got a gothic romance sort of thing going on to it. There's um, a really weird line as well where he sort of says to Tanya. 
um, oh, we better get on and do some grave rubbings. Wouldn't want to get, <laughs> wouldn't want to go back to your mum and tell her there wasn't any rubbing. And yeah. then it cut. He's and it weird cut, with and mums, though, isn't he? We already know Tan- he's got a weird thing. Yeah, but then mums. Tanya says, "Oh, me either." So I'm like, "That's weird. It's just weird." Mm. Why is? Yeah, he has got a weird thing with mums, but only his own. What? What? What takes him off here? He just suddenly starts sucking the blood out of her, sucking the life force out of her. Or... Yeah, so I think they're having a, they're having a lovely kiss, and then he kind of like kisses her a bit. He gets a bit too intense. He's like, "Oh yeah," and yeah. then she goes, "Oh, just calm down a little bit." <laughs> and he goes, "Oh, I thought you were into it or something." And then yeah. I think he just starts going ape shit. So he starts. She, <laughs> yeah, he he's got like tries... two modes. He just instantly kicks into into. Cat I mean, as, as soon as he gets horny, that's it. He's a cat yeah, man. Yeah, he's a cat man. And then he just tries to suck the life force <laughs> out of it. So obviously, he opens his mouth and like a big beaming light goes in. I mean, it's not. So like luminescent sherbet falls yeah. out of her mouth. It's um, a bit stupid. It is a bit stupid. But at this point, she's like, "Get off me!" She whops him with the camera. She takes a few photos at some point as well. Um, yeah, and then they they chase each other around. I think she gets. A I think she, she puts a corkscrew in his eye. Yeah, yeah. Um, um, the policeman at, at this point uh, turns up because the car's gone back to blue. Yep. Uh, so he pulls up. And he's like, I think Tanya gets away at this point. She gets in his car. Yeah, and then he's like, "Don't worry, Tanya, babes, I'll sort it out." And then he gets the pencil in the ear, maybe. Yeah, and then Charles comes up behind him, puts, shoves yeah. the pencil in his ear. He falls down onto the side of his head. The and pencil goes even uh, further HB... into his brain. We know it's the HB two point five, whatever, yeah. whatever the thing's called. So it's like a hard, hard pencil. It's a hard pencil. <laughs> but then also, Charles says, "Cop kebab." Do you remember that? <laughs> See, this is bizarre. Pencil. The word yeah. is like Freddy Krueger style, like things coming yeah. out of his mouth. Yeah, it's insane. Cop cop kebab surely like as a sleepwalker or whatever the hell he bloody is yeah. cat man cat man do yeah. he wants to like keep a low profile right he can't just go around murdering teachers and cops like on the same day quipping or whatever. all the time he's supposed quipping. to be the gothic, gothic romantic type not the freddy krueger quipping uh murderer uh but yes yeah, so he kills kills him but uh clovis obviously comes to the rescue <laughs> uh i think he gets a couple of good scratches in yeah and he starts like um smoking you yeah. know from, from where he's being attacked by the cat i mean he's really allergic to this cat yeah. clovis clovis goes ape shit as well clovis, clovis. is not hypoallergenic like no. he's <laughs> super hyper allergenic yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah he, he hates the fact that you've put a pencil in the ear of his partner yeah human. and some, somehow inexplicably uh the cop is still alive and like he's got a pencil like all the way in his brain but he sits up yeah. and tries and he shoots um charles but then charles turns around and just grabs the gun off him and shoots him and he goes flying backwards quite comically. It's a shame. I mean, I did feel kind of sad when he died. Um, but then I was like, oh, I see what they're doing. This is a revenge movie. Because Clovis, <laughs> at this point, he's yeah, seeing yeah, yeah. red. Like, this is all about his sort of rise to revenge. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, Charles gets away somehow. Yeah. I think he just runs away or something. Or gets in his car and He just dri- drives off because he's yeah. off his nut. And then he goes back home, basically. And he's, he's in a bad way. Yeah. He's like, you never guess what. I've been attacked by Clovis, and they're like, "Fucking Clovis, yeah. the little shit!" At this point, there's cats all outside, and he's like, he's having an allergic reaction. He's on the bed, on the sofa. His eyes are sealing shut. He's yeah. got full he's, big head he, cat. He looks like Bear Grylls. Like <laughs> Bear Grylls. What did Bear Grylls have a have an allergic reaction to? Uh, like a bee sting. He turns into Benedict, t- Benedict Cumberbatch. Yeah. yeah, that's basically what's happening. <laughs> His Charles yeah. is turning into Bear Grylls, who then turns into Benedict Cumberbatch. Yeah. Uh, or because or cause he couldn't handle the pussy. Yeah, and then I think he's dying, pretty much. And his mum's yeah. like, no, no, oh, no, don't. <laughs> um, oh, don't <laughs> die, mate. Bloody hell. Uh, yeah, and then she basically goes to Tanya's house yeah. and just starts going ape shit, uh, killing people. There's some police who come to investigate the house at some point as well. Is that right? Yeah, so this is when, like, um, they've got a few police people knocking around now. We've got uh, Ron Perlman, the original sheriff, Another guy who seems who is eating corn at yeah. the dinner table. He's um, nailing all the corn cob. Ron Perlman says something weird talking about Tanya. He sort of says, yeah. "They say, what, what about Tanya? Who's who's seen all this shit happen?" And he goes, "She needs a slap on the ass. And if her parents will give it to her, I will." <laughs> it's just like you're letting your weird pervert thing get in getting away a line of duty yeah. here, mate. Yeah, that's, um, that's how that basically that's how he solves every crime. So, What's happened? They've done a murder. I'm gonna slap him on the ass. <laughs> Come yeah. on. Yeah, it, it, it works. I can imagine Ron Perlman doing that. 
Yeah, exactly. Slapping on the ass all the time. Yeah. Big red fist. Yeah. <laughs> it's very sore after all that slapping. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, <laughs> bloody hell. Massive. You're perfect for Elbow. You are. You've got the red fist and everything. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It does stink, though. Get some Savlon, Get some Savlon on it. Yeah. Um, so the mum turns up at the house, at Tanya's house, and if she goes out, she, she stabs one cop with a uh, corn, corn on a cob. <laughs> Cop, corn on the cop. Can no... you can you stab someone with a corn on the cop? They are quite That's hard. Good... I, don't know I feel you... like it, they're hard, but you feel like I mean, obviously she's super strong because she's a cat. I think he just really bruised. Like I don't think. Yeah, you like... just you're like, oh, oh, that bloody hurt! That <laughs> oh. did. <laughs> you went just go through. You go. Oh, yeah. stop it! But Big see, bully. unlike her son Charles, she doesn't say like cop kebab. She doesn't even say uh, corn on the cop. She just yeah. she plays it cool. And instead, she, she just throws the mum out the window. <laughs> yeah, no. What does she say, though? She says something after she's done that. No, oh, oh she yeah, say she, says, she says something like, you should eat your vegetables, otherwise no dessert. <laughs> something, like, uh, something like that. Yeah, bizarre. Yeah. But, um, so she, she, throws, with... oh, she stabs, she that breaks the dad's neck or calls yeah. his neck. Or, actually, yeah, there's something. In, there's something there's yeah. Another one of the police officers tries to shoot her, and he's just, he's just like <laughs> missing like so yeah. ridiculously. It's like she just stood there glaring at him, and he's just missing. And then he just runs out of bullets and just runs away. Is that the same guy who gets a big corn on the cob? Corn on the cob. Yeah. yeah, he deserved it just for that ridiculous Maybe display. Maybe aim because like ah, oh, I've got a terrible bruise on my back. <laughs> yeah. Oh my bloody back! <laughs> corn on yeah. the cob. It's got a dead arm, is what it is. Um, <clears throat> so she um, steals Tanya, takes her back to the house. Uh, at this point, it is like. There's so many cats outside, wild cats. It is like going back to your flat in Mallorca. They're all there. Don't feed them. They just, <laughs> <laughs> they just chase you, follow you around. So yeah. she takes Tanya inside and she's like, dance with Charles. And she's like, Charles is dead. At this point, he looks dead. Yeah, like He looks like he's just, he looks like, like, I don't know, like a molten fudge or something. <laughs> like He doesn't look right. Um, he, looks, he looks proper fucked up. He does look proper fucked up. Uh, but she plays a special music. It's like a time music. <laughs> 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 and then she kind of makes them dance but it looks like she's like using telekinetic powers to sort of move them around like a doll yeah but then he comes alive again and, and but then starts... he comes alive again and kind of mutates a little bit more like yeah. into the big horrible you know animatronic head yeah it's just yeah and then she and he continues trying to suck the life force out of tanya who manages to like she's obsessed with like ruining his eyes but she like gives him the old thumb in the eye ah! yeah yeah um, and manages to fight her way out. Yeah. She, at this, the, the police are arriving, I think, at this point. The cats are now, like, on go. <laughs> They're like, it's like um, it's a battle of the seven, arm, seven armies. Like, the cats are going for it, I think, at this point. And yeah. And storming the house. <laughs> um, does Tanya, they all, they, Tanya gets they, outside? Yeah, they all start attacking... Um, um, Mary, but she uh, have you seen when she kills one of the cats? She kind of just catches it and then just like shakes it, just like yeah. dead. Yeah. I mean, there are a lot of dead cats in this film. Probably the most dead cats in any film, right? There's also a bit of um, thingy acting. I don't know what you, what you need to call this acting, where someone's holding something and they're doing that. Like, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. That. What is that acting called? Because that's a skill. Uh, so I feel like Bruce Campbell's the best person at doing it. Yeah, yeah. But... Ragdolling. It's like... Ragdolling. Yeah. <laughs> well, oh, oh, <laughs> hey, oh, oh. There's a bit yeah. of ragdolling going on. <laughs> um, and, okay, so she gets out of the house, I believe, and then she is um, attacked by the mum again. The cop, the, yeah. the, the sheriff turns up, and she picks up the cop and, like, impales him on a white picket yeah. fence. And then she starts firing, her, firing the gun. She picks up the gun and starts firing it, and for some reason it's, like, a grenade launcher or something. just like, exploding <laughs> the cop car. Boom, boom. Yeah. I mean... This film's been pretty ridiculous, but you know, at this point, yeah. you're a bit like, well, oh, it's just. And now it's just... like time for Clovis to shine. Clovis, yeah. full on vengeance movie. He he gets up, he starts like scratching her face. The other cats start joining. He's like, come on, he's leading leading the front. Come uh, on, let's murder her. She shagged yeah. her son. <laughs> <laughs> Dirty <laughs> bitch. Yeah, and then. Uh... <laughs> um, so just shag it... someone who ain't your son. It's easy. <laughs> And then I don't even really remember Charles dying now. But she, anyway, so at some point, the the cat scratches on it on the mum's neck starts to uh, spark, and then flames <laughs> start popping out. Uh, yep. She sets on fire, 
Um, you set some fire and then you and falls down dead, but then suddenly turns up in her human form, still on fire. Yeah, yeah. Um, and then I think it ends. I don't think there's anything else that happens after that. Yeah. Uh, Tanya just picks up Clovis and hugs him. This is the love story here. Right. There might have been an incestuous relationship, but there's also yeah. the start of a bestiality relationship happening yeah. at the end when Tanya and Clovis look deep into each other's eyes and, and kiss then passionately. Kiss. <laughs> Amazing. Um, so she, uh, but she makes a mistake the next week when she brushes him backwards and he, like, they break oh. the relationship after that. <laughs> <laughs> then he jumps on her face and just ruins her. <laughs> Sets her on fire. Yeah. Okay, so uh, that's how it ends. So trivia. Uh, yeah. There wasn't too much to choose from for this one. So I had to, you know, make some shit up. So number one, um, this was director Mick Garris. Um, it's his first Stephen King adaptation. He later went on to do uh, feature length films and television miniseries. How many Stephen King adaptations did he do? Uh, including this? Uh, no. On, on top of this additional uh, yeah. another three so I can only think there's The Stand oh um, yeah The Stand yeah, The yeah, Shining yeah. he did the other version of The Shining the TV version yeah Bag of Bones oh. there's one called like Rose or something um, I couldn't I couldn't think of all of them but it, it was six on top of this so seven altogether but Jesus. I couldn't remember what the other ones were um, there's something about Rose I think might so, I'm, so I'm assuming he must have been hired by Stephen King to make all of them, right? I think they got on really well. Because um, Mick Garris, by the way, if you're a podcast, Mick Garris has a podcast. Uh, it's called Post Mortem with Mick Garris, and he interviews horror filmmakers and stuff. He's a really nice guy. Like he's really sound. But I just don't feel like uh, my cat's stacking my, my microphone. I don't feel like <laughs> I don't know if I've ever really enjoyed a Mick Garris film. I don't know. Ah. Uh. I'm just seeing what else he's done. Critters 2. Um, Mick Garris. Yeah, I don't know if I've ever seen any others. I don't think I've ever seen... Um, I don't think I've ever seen Stand. Uh, I remember watching it as a kid, um, but I don't really remember much, too much other than Randall Flagg. Um, uh, number two. Which of these people wasn't a cameo in this film? Joe Dante was the director of Gremlins, John Landis, director of uh, American Werewolf in London, or Tom Holland, director of Fright Night, so which wasn't a cameo in the film. John Landis was in there, and there was someone someone pretty close to him who was a director, but I didn't pay attention. So <laughs> <laughs> it could have been either one of those. So I'm going to say the person who wasn't in it was the Fright Night dude. Correct. Tom Holland was not in the uh, in the film. Uh, Joe Dante, I think, was the director who stood next to John Landis. Um, okay, number three. There was only one deleted scene for an entire film in which uh, Charles takes a bag of cat litter into the bathroom. True or false? True. Why not? <laughs> false, unfortunately. Ah, um, that would have been good. He took a cat litter tray into the bathroom. <laughs> no, Is that true? Um, no, I don't think so. Ah. I hope so. Uh, okay, number four. my emotions. <laughs> um, after Charles... Again, there wasn't too much trivia to choose from. I had to make up a lot of bullshit. Or did I? <laughs> number four. After Charles, <laughs> after Charles eats his high school English teacher, what grade did he get? Oh. Um, well, probably an A. A plus. Because he, he could have done what he wanted, right? He had the hand. So, he could have used it to... <laughs> True, he did, which... have, he did have the upper hand at that point in time. <laughs> uh, I actually put here C for cat. Uh, number five. <laughs> when... <laughs> number five. When, when casting for the role of Charles Brady, um, <laughs> this is deep. actor Brian Krause said to Mick Garris, listen Mick, people call me motherfucker all the time. <laughs> <laughs> I can do this role. True or false? <laughs> Basically, people and call Mick me... People was... <laughs> It was like, you're perfect. You're, you're absolutely perfect. Because in this job, you've got to fuck your mum. <laughs> what? Charles what Brady, you to? do look like a motherfucker. <laughs> true or false? Uh, true. It is true. Okay, so... <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> okay, so you need to grade the film uh, oh. from A to B. Which one are you going to go for? <laughs> from A to B? <laughs> Yeah, I don't know, mate. I'm gonna have to go lower than that. I would. I was gonna do C for cat, but I can't. 
I'm gonna have to do a D for dog. D minus, I think. Yeah, D for dog egg. Uh, I went for D as well. <laughs> <laughs> a little little dog egg. Yeah. I feel I feel like I understand something. Maybe what they were going for, kind of like a fun romp of a sort of horror film. But the, the tonally, it's kind of all weird. It it's it's all I don't know. It's just, something doesn't quite work about it. I don't think they kind of went all the way one way or the other. No, it doesn't feel like one thing or another. It just kind of feels like it kind of sits in the middle somewhere. And when yeah. ridiculous things happen, it's hard to just go, well, it's just because this film's ridiculous. It, yeah. It's easy to just go, what is hell is going on? Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, okay. So next week, we'll be doing the, the number one on the 50 best horror movies ever. So this is the best horror movie ever made. The next one, not, not this one. Um... <laughs> 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 yep. so, so yeah so we'll catch you soon um, this show is brought to you by Hawk and Cleaver head over to hawkandcleaver.com and grab a free book become a patron over at patreon.com forward slash Hawk and Cleaver thanks to Kovach Cowman for our theme music thanks to Acast for hosting the show thanks to the listeners if you enjoyed the show give us a 5 star rating review on iTunes and remember to subscribe and thanks to my co-host Ben for being a real horror dude thank you Luke alright I will talk to you yeah. very soon for our Stephen King double bill alright out